Oh, hey. Welcome guys to Plumbing with Tim. Today we're going to do a follow-up on a video that I put out about three or four months ago on how to install a thermal expansion tank on your water heater. So you're not going to want to miss this. First of all, I'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for coming over and hanging out here on this channel. Uh, hopefully you've learned some things. I know I've learned some things from some of you guys. And not to mention the fact that when I did put out the video on how to install the thermal expansion tank, I readily had a couple viewers that reminded me that I forgot one of the most critical parts of putting one of these things in. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So let's go. Okay, so now you've installed your water heater and you have everything ready to go to put the thermal expansion tank on the top of it like it's needed to. So here's what you're gonna need. You need to have your expansion tank that comes pre-charged from the factory at 40 PSI. You're also gonna need a gauge that goes up to at least 80 pounds that can be connected to a hose bit. A pair of channel locks or pliers. A tire pressure gauge that goes to at least 60 to 80 pounds. All right, kind of having a hard time. Don't get one at 50, it won't work. And last but not least, a bicycle hand pump for a tire, okay? That's what you're gonna need so let's show you the first step. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is locate an outside hose bib. Take your pressure gauge. See that? Go ahead and install it on there. At this point in time, you want to make sure no one in the house is running any water or anything. Make sure you have a full pressurized system. Preferably want to put this gauge on a hose bib that's closest to the incoming source of your water in your home. And then tighten it down real well. This way, you're getting a full reading of what's happening okay next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the spigot on and right there is reading right around 50 pounds okay on to the next step okay now that we know we have about 50 pounds of pressure come from the city Take the top of your thermal expansion tank cap off of there. See, you have a Schrader valve. What I want to do, and I already told you that these usually come pre-charged at 40 PSI from the factory, but let's take a look with our tire gauge. Right at 40. So what we need to do now is match the incoming pressure with the pressure we have here inside of the tank, which is 50 pounds. Take your tire gauge next and test your pressure out on your tank. Fifty pounds. Reinstall your cap on top of your Schrader valve. Now you're ready to put this baby on top of the water heater where it's supposed to be. Because now we're charged at the same PSI as incoming water pressure from the city. Some local municipalities may require you, as you can see on the diagram that came with the thermal expansion tank, is to install an inline check valve before you even reach the thermal expansion tank. All right, that's gonna have to go with code and demographic of where you live. So make sure to know your local codes and laws and stuff like that. And you'll be fine. Now I did get a couple comments on how to install a thermal expansion tank on that video. Um, at the end of this video, I will leave an end card that you can go over and you can go check it out if you haven't already, uh, so you can see where this whole conversation came from. But a couple people asked me, Tim, don't you need to have a check valve? That's a very good question. First of all, if you have a closed loop domestic water system, may also include a backflow preventer or a water meter with a check valve or any other re no return valves. Nowadays in a lot of municipalities where they're upgrading water meters, there is a backflow preventer already installed inside of that meter or before or after it. So an inline check valve would not be necessary at this point. 
Well, hey, that's all the time we got for today. Man, I appreciate you all hanging out and watching me blab to you about some plumbing. But this is very important. This is a follow-up video on how to install a thermal expansion tank. And I was readily uh, reminded by a couple of you very good viewers out there, Smarty Pants, that I forgot to show you one of the most important critical steps to install these things. Now you guys know. Remember these things usually, generally speaking, come about 40 PSI charged from the factory. Residential. You get into more commercial and the bigger tanks are probably going to have more. Average water pressure coming in from the city or well is going to average between 50 and 60 pounds. So right out of the gates, be prepared to add some air in here. If you do not match the air pressure and the city pressure together, it's not going to be effective. Trust me. Thanks to everybody in the community for being a part of this and helping me out and grow and even teach me things at times. Till next time, this has been Plumbing with Tim. Keep plumbing.